With the 40 straddle on, we raise it up to 125 from the cutoff. Second blind doesn't want to play with me and Doug Polk in the putt, so he bumps it up. Doug folds the straddle, and we call the additional 525. Let's play a big pot, y'all. Before the flop comes out, I actually look at the dealer and ask, can you do that thing we've been practicing? Dealer gives me a wink, and he delivers the goods. Value City, here we come. I know, I know. It kind of sucks that I would just give you a teaser and then make you wait another two, three minutes before we go through like eight, nine, or ten really fantastic hands. But I bet you can wait just another minute. Before we get started, just want to quickly introduce myself. My name is Jay Wynn. I've been learning poker since the end of 2019, and after falling in love with the game, I decided, fuck it, I'm going to quit my 180K job and then go pro. And why not document everything on YouTube? The ups, the downs, the expectations, the hard work needed to becoming great. So this is log number one. I'm putting a ton of time into it, and I'm looking forward to sharing my journey with you guys. But before we go into some hands... I just need y'all to do me a quick favor and hit the like and the subscribe button. It'll feed into the YouTube algorithm and support my channel. No, seriously, come on. The game is 5, 5, 10, 20, and we're sitting down with 7K. Let's go ahead and move on to some hands. You can't do on our first button, play. we get served the ducks. Off, you know? It's not my favorite hand to play since we'll tend to overfold a ton, but we ain't bring our rent money here just to fold hands, so here we go. Second blind calls, and Doug Polk is sitting in the straddle and he's giving us that pause. You know that pause. He raises it up to 325, and we have a standard call. Second blind folds. There's a ton of flops I'm worried about, but not this one. When Doug checks it over to me, we begin building a pot with a bet of $400, and he quickly calls. When we get another card better for our range, I figured all ace high combos are going to fold anyway, so we're mainly targeting over pairs. We go for a pot size bet of $1,500. If he calls here, SPR is going to be close to 101, allowing me to jam on most rivers. He thinks it over a bit, and he makes the call. The river is an offsuit 8, and I proceed to jam my stack as planned. Upon reflection, however, I think we chase all over pairs away, and Doug is too good to ever call light here. I think a half pot bet and giving him 3 to 1 would have been a much better option, as my range currently has way too many value hands on this particular runout. Unfortunately, he does find the fold but we get another hand to learn from. Next interesting hand. We open with the Jack Nine of Hearts from the cutoff and get smooth called by the button. When the flop gives us bottom pair plus flush draw, we can do a couple of things here. We could see bet our range and see how villain responds. However, I personally don't like taking a bet check line out of position. It's weak and oftentimes we can get exploited by the river. For this reason, and since we have plenty of outs to improve, I decide to take a check raise line. When we check to the button, he puts in a big bet of 120. Button doesn't have a lot of big aces in his range, and we're blocking bottom set. In case he's probing with a queen x hand or some draw, I think a big check raise will get many of these hands to fold. We execute our plan, and it seems the button isn't ready to let go of his hand. When the turn comes another ace, all of his weak ace hands are now strengthened. This isn't a good card to barrel, so we decide to check. Villain checks it back. One more card to go, and we're only hoping for a heart. But yeah, no love in this run out. We check it back to the villain, and he puts in a big bet. I don't think my nines are any good here, so we make the fold. We're happy with how we played this, however. In the next hand, cutoff opens it up to 60. Against the cutoff range, we're going to have a lot of three bets. Thankfully, queens are going to do quite well. We raise it up to 225 to isolate villain and play in position. He makes the call and we go to a flop. On a 10 high board, we can choose to see bet or check it back and play a two street game. I decide to check it back as we rarely have any of the nutted hands here. More importantly, I want to keep ranges wide in case Villain decides to take a stab on later streets. When the turn pairs the board, Villain decides to lead out. I actually don't mind the nine here as much as the nine reduces some combos of sets that would have dominated us on the flop. Regardless, there's tons of air and weaker hands on this board and we gladly make the call. The river completes a flush and a straight. Not ideal. We're glad to see villain check it over to us, so we go for a 40% size on the river. I thought about this bet after the fact, and although villain folds and we take down the pot, I don't think my river bet served the purpose. I don't think many weaker hands ever make the call and will sometimes face a check raise, which is going to be the worst. I'm all about the value, but I hesitate defaulting to a bet here. Let me know in the comments what you think. 
Is this a mandatory value bet on this run out? Here, early position opens up to 60, and we flatten a hijack, bringing along the button and the straddle. Texas heads up, they call it. Texas heads up. Texas heads up. Going multi-way, there are very specific boards we want to continue on. And this ain't a bad one. Gut shot, backdoor flush, and there's even some cards we can bluff with on later streets. Early position leads out with a half pot bet. We don't want to give up yet, though there's some extra alert when button also comes for the ride. Turn brings in the backdoor flush, but we decide that a check is best with someone behind. To our surprise, he checks it back as well. On the river, we get a favorable card and complete our flush. As played, I wasn't sure if a bet would have gotten called by anyone, so I'm hoping that the in position player will bluff at the river. Unfortunately, he doesn't take the bait, and I think we might have played this one way too passively. We gotta get value on multiway pots to justify the frequency we're playing them. When it falls to us on the cutoff, we raise it up to 60 with one of our fun hands, 6 5 suited. Only the straddle defense. Flop comes out, two hearts, and an open ender. Top end of a combo draw. Let's build a pot. We start with the 30% bet and get called. Here, the straddle is going to continue with some ace highs, top pair, marginal pair combos. Good for us to know. When the turn comes a neutral nine, I think we can either check or bet. But with up to 15 strong outs and 30% equity, I think we're going to want to continue betting and hope to fold hands like ace four, medium pocket pairs, weak queens, Anyway, we bet 300 into 220 and expecting to get plenty of folds. Villain calls again, and I'm thinking we're going to have to continue the story on the river. The river pairs the board, and I think I'm close to a punt before he dunks out a decent-sized bet of 505. Not sure if a jam ever gets through, so we decide to show our fun hand. And get shown a more fun hand. Jack high. That floats. That misses. And that dunks out. Yikes. Nice hand, Eli. You outplayed me. Hey, uh, taking a quick break. Um, so we're in the game for roughly about 7,000. We're up 1,000 right now. Playing okay. Got into a couple of good spots. Made a pretty big uh, betting blunder earlier against Doug when we had a set. Um, but uh, otherwise, the game is good. Conversation's great. Uh, let's see if uh, we can run it up over the next couple of hours. Oh, up. This next hand is a juicy one. We open it up with queen jack off from the cutoff. Only the small blind calls. We're going heads up to a flop of ace nine eight rainbow. Here, we could continue betting with a bulk part of our range, but we opt to start with a two thirds bet with our gut draw. Villain's not ready to go away and he makes the call. Turn comes a brick. A lot of the stronger hands on his board would have three bet us, however, so our plan is to size up and fold out a larger part of our opponent's range. We bet $500 into 375. He seems fairly confident, and I think I caught him reaching for more chips, but he only makes the call. At this point, I'm giving up and don't plan a triple barrel. Unless our straight hits, of course. We nail our gutter, and now we can safely go for value. I thought about the different bet sizes we could use, but I end up betting 2x the pot. Villain goes in a tank for three minutes, so we have some time. Hear me out. The River 10 is an interesting card because it also completes a straight for a hand like 7-6 suited, that would have continued on a flop and turn when a backdoor flush comes in. I used a big sizing from the flop and an over bet on a turn, and in both scenarios, Villain seemed to show confidence. By the river, I think I would imagine anyway, there are some two pair hands that would be difficult to let go of. Ultimately, we don't get the call. Even with the same logic, I may have gotten way too excited and missed out on a larger part of his calling range. Think about like a, a, a big ace pair, for example. Perhaps an 80% bet would have been fine and most likely would have gotten a call. With the 40 straddle on, we raise it up to 125 from the cutoff. Second blind doesn't want to play with me and Doug Polk in a putt, so he bumps it up. Doug folds the straddle, and we call the additional 525. Let's play a big putt, y'all. Before the flop comes out, I actually look at the dealer and ask, can you do that thing we've been practicing? Dealer gives me a wink. And he delivers the goods. Value City, here we come. The three better decides to see bet small. Quarter pot. While I could smooth call here, I'm not a fan of being passive since his three betting range contains a lot of hands that will call a race. For example, he has both of the top sets on this board, all of the overpairs, 
a naked ace of diamonds, and some straight draws that may not want to give up. We raise it up to 1k, around 70% pot, and get snap call. At this point, I'm trying to figure out how to get the money in. With the effective SPR a little over 1, I decided to jam it on a turn. Our opponent does take a minute, but decide to fold. He later tells us he was on a draw. I thought about this hand a lot at home and whether or not I should have bet smaller on turn, and in getting the rest on the river. For context, Villain had under 4k left. If I bet half pot, around $1,700, I'd be giving him 3 to 1 into the river, enticing a lot of calls. The worst hand here he has is a naked ace of diamonds, which would still have up to 5 clean outs, 10% equity or so. His best hands are sets with up to 20% equity. Overall, I don't like a half pot bet here, since I'd have to pay him off if he drills any of these rivers. I'd rather jam the turn, which I do with all of my strong bluffs anyway, and hope to get looked up by the top end of his range. To conclude, I'm happy with my turn jam and trying to get it all. With him folding, not the outcome I wanted, but hey, we do get paid here sometimes. In our final hand, we go four ways to the flop after small blind opens the action. We have queen 10 off in the second straddle and decide to defend. Flop is jack high with two spades. Small blind, big blind, and the first straddle all check. We're plenty happy to take a free card. On the turn, we drill top pair. With the weak kicker, I think it's both fine to bet for value or to check back and play it as a bluff catcher. Since everyone checked quickly on the flop, I'm not worried about a flush draw and decide to lay the trap by checking back turn. Small blind takes the bait and puts out a huge 2.4x over bet on the river. He's an experienced player and I don't ever see straights and two pairs making this type of bet. We make the call with a disguised hand and we're glad that our turn check worked for max value. Eli's making the vlog real. <laughs> I hope he didn't get that part. That concludes session one on vlog. Pretty happy with the overall session, although in hindsight, there's clearly a few areas where we would have done things a little bit differently. Um, but let's talk numbers. So we're in the game for approximately 7K and we're out the game for 13K for a net gain of 6K. We check out of the session roughly around 7.30 PM. And in general, we don't play Friday nights and weekends. And so we got to enjoy the full weekend, did a little farmer's market stuff, hung out with the wife, ate cool food, and prepared for a new week of poker. With that being said, vlog one is officially done and online. I appreciate all of the patience that you guys gave me to get vlog one up. And now that it's here, gotta ask you for a big favor. I put a ton of time in getting all of this content, including the commentary video and all of that good stuff online for you guys. So I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like and the subscribe button. It'll feed into the YouTube algorithm and it'll promote my channel to other people just like you. But um, other than that, I got three other vlogs in a chamber. I'm going to start working on it as early as tomorrow morning. And um, hopefully I'll get one up before the end of the week and then go from there. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. Other than that, peace.